Jay, we got a lot to get into. His Excellency Archbishop Cordelione is going to be stopping by. I want you to do something. I got a call to action for you, a petition I think that we should all rally behind. I'll fill you in on what that is. But first, let me give you a little background on what's going on. You know, you heard about the situation in New York City. We talked about that where the professor at Hunter College started yelling at those pro-life students, those students for life who had tables of literature at all, just came out and yelled obscenities at them, shoved their brochures off the table, walked away. And then, of course, later that story escalated when a New York Post reporter and a videographer went to her apartment. And she met up at the door of the machete and held it to the reporter's neck. Then chased him down the street, brandishing that, that machete. She's now claiming that she is the victim. She's the victim in all this and has been uh, charged with menacing and terroristic threats. Uh, not assault with a deadly weapon, surprisingly. But uh, that's the latest over there. On the other side of the country, something similar is happening. Three years ago, there was a mob that broke into the property of St. Raphael Parish Church in St. Raphael, California. And they toppled, they destroyed a statue of uh, St. Uh, Unipero Serra, and the police were there, but they did nothing. I mean, they did nothing. Uh, perpetrators were arrested, but there was, you know, they still haven't been a trial for them. In fact, uh, the Archbishop, Archbishop Salvatore Cordelione, insisted that he didn't want jail time for them. You know, he, he wanted restorative justice, but he didn't want them to go to jail. Now, again, this is three years ago. So the, the Marin County District Attorney originally filed felony charges against the perps, but the DA just announced yesterday that the charges are going to be reduced. Simply a misdemeanor. The Archbishop has uh, also found out from the police force that they were ordered not to intervene on the night of the attack. I just cannot understand why not, right? Why wouldn't the police, okay, I can see a bystander or somebody else, uh, why would you tell the police not to intervene when somebody's committing a crime? That doesn't make any sense to me. I, I would love to welcome to the program right now His Excellency Archbishop Cordelione, who joins me. Grab a pen and paper, too, because he's got a great call to action for you. Your Excellency, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me on the show. Okay, I, I want to start with the last thing I said. I'm stunned. The police were ordered not to intervene. We, if, fill in the gaps. I, you know, I kind of broad brush what went down, but um, who gave the order? Why would that happen? Why now is all this being reduced? I mean, I... I don't understand the rationale behind it. We don't know um, who gave the order. There's no accountability here. There's been no investigation. Mind me, this happened in October of 2020, and this was in the midst of all of those rampages across the country um, with these protests and tearing down of statues. And and uh, so and police were were hesitant, I think, in some places to, to intervene because of all the attacks on the police as well. But Apparently, I, I'm sure the officers were given the order not to intervene, especially because the parish had an agreement with the police department that they knew that the statue was on parish property uh, outdoors, so they knew it was vulnerable and it might be attacked. And uh, they had agreement with the police department that if protesters trespassed onto the property, the police would intervene to stop them and arrest them. But instead, they stood there and watched them deface the statue and tear it down. And after that, then they arrested the people. So I don't I don't know who gave the order. I, I don't know what the reasons were, but no. um, here we are. This is felony vandalism. Yeah, no That's destroying property worth a thousand dollars or more, and this statue is worth forty thousand dollars. So yeah. a clear crime, felony crime, was being committed. It's, it's, to me, and again, I'm I'm just looking at this remotely, but it seems like Catholic prejudice. Somebody had an anti-Catholic motive to say, "Hey, don't intervene. Go ahead and do it." Uh, and, and you show charity, and I, I just thought it was so you know, memorable and, and, and noble of you, you know, you told the DA, hey, I don't want these guys to go to jail. I don't want jail time for them. Um, explain why you said that and maybe what you were hoping for. I was hoping for a, a reconciliation and a kind of mutual understanding. I was, uh, it took a long time before anyone uh, approached me or suggested the idea of doing restorative justice. Yeah. Now, restorative justice normally happens after there's been a verdict. So right, right. there's someone who's committed a crime, and then they try to bring about a reconciliation between the criminal and, and the victims. But I suggested that we do it before a trial. I, I, I wanted to avoid a trial because uh, then it could get, get ugly and contentious. Mm -hmm. and, but sure. we could have real restorative justice before a trial and avoid it. But, but it has to be true justice, too. So certain conditions have to be met. You know, the ones who committed the crime have to 
to apologize for it and repudiate it, you know, admit that what they did was wrong and acknowledge the harm it inflicted on devout Catholics all over our archdiocese and, and beyond, yeah. that there has to be a um, monetary restitution for restoring the statue. I wanted it at our discussions, a credible historian present, who, so we're talking about the honest, the real yeah. historical record, and not these kind of fictitious, um, kind of slandering um, accusations against Nipro Serra. Yeah. And I also, this was more pro forma, what wasn't going to happen, but to be really honest, we need a representative of the two other eras of the mission period, because there was the, the Spanish evangelization period that started in 1769, ended in 1834, when Mexico obtained its independence and California went to Mexico. Mexico secularized the mission, so they, they uh, expelled the Franciscans and seized the territory, and so the Indians then were dispossessed. The Franciscans wanted to educate them, evangelize them. Uh, make them know how to work the land and work with animals and be self-governing and then hand the territory back to them. But that fell apart uh, under the Mexican regime. Then when it passed to the United States uh, um, after the Mexican-American War, there was an actual genocide against the Indians during the American period. So we have these three different periods and there were different abuses of different degrees happening. So we needed an honest historian there present to kind of clarify all of that. That's what I was hoping for. But yeah. then the, the mediator who was uh, contracted was uh, treating the perpetrators of this crime as if they were a victim. I know. And they were keeping the, the archdiocese at arm's length and uh, not, not involving me. The, per, the, the mediator saw me as a problem, that this is going to ruin this process of restorative justice. I could only come at the very end of the process. And even though I wanted it, before the trial in order to avoid a trial. And I told the DA, I did not want these uh, criminals to, to actually do time in prison. Right. They could be short of restorative justice, a true reconciliation. They could be convicted of a felony and then given probation time. Right. Um, so that's trying mercy, how mercy tempers justice. It yes. doesn't uh, uh, undermine justice. It, it, it tempers it. That's yeah, really well said. That's, so that's, 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 what was, that's what I was hoping for, but um, so, so it didn't happen the yeah, go ahead. No, I, I was going to say, so the DA never contacted you or your representatives regarding restorative justice, which is really, as you point well, out. There was, we, there was, we did have one conversation. Okay. Uh, there was some some communication with my legal counsel, but then a deputy DA did meet yeah. with the, our legal counsel, myself, yeah. by, um, uh, by Zoom. And um, she seemed to be understanding. She kind of feigned understanding yeah. of our... Or the harm we we suffered and what our concerns were, and said she take that back to the DA. Um, and I I made these suggestions: get a different mediator that will be a true, yeah. will truly be fair in in going through this. So and so, if not, then convict them, but don't send them to prison. And uh, they stick with this idea yeah. of they call it a diversion, where it's reduced to misdemeanor. Yeah. And um, why did they do that? And they're punished by. Uh, well, um, I'm afraid to say. You know, there's a lot of mistrust in government institutions now yeah. because no. our government officials are making decisions based on what's politically convenient so for true. them so and true. not what's on objective standards of justice or what's in the best interest of the citizens. And let, let's say there's, there's this rising tide of anti-Catholicism right now. Right. It is not politically convenient to defend Catholics or any kind of uh, attack on Catholics or Catholic Church property. Yeah. It just it's politically dangerous to do that. So. Uh, I was really hopeful that at this time, when the DA charged him with a felony vandalism charge, that there was someone in government who was willing to do the right thing, despite the political inconvenience of it. But uh, I guess I was wrong again. Well, Your Excellency, um, what can we do? Uh, I know you have a petition you'd like people to sign. Uh, I'd like to see everybody sign that to let our voices be heard. Because I agree with you. you know, we've talked about the L.A. Dodgers and a whole litany of other things. Uh, we are clearly seeing um, a very overt prejudice against against Catholicism today, and it's becoming acceptable. The fact they downgraded those charges of misdemeanors, uh, yeah, that sends a message. That in itself communicates a message. But what can we do? How can we respond? And uh, what would you like those listening to do? Uh, well, we need to be organized. So we do have an online petition. I would invite everyone to go online and sign this petition protesting the decision of the DA. It's at benedictinstitute.org. Uh, people can sign that petition. Um, 
they can uh, write letters to the editor, write op-eds, um, be just try to organize and be politically active. Uh, it's the role of lay people to be politically active, try to organize and elect elect politicians who will truly look out for the common good and, and observe basic standards uh, of justice and even decency. Yeah. Even decency. I mean, here a felony crime was being committed, caught on camera with the police watching and all other by, kind of bystanders watching. There's no question that a felony was committed. Yeah. And then the DA gave for the reasons of diminishing it to a misdemeanor, that a lack of previous criminal record, and that they participated in the restorative justice process which is a direct insult. Yeah, no they kidding. kept us out of it. No and kidding. now she's saying because of they participated in this process that they can reduce it to a misdemeanor. That, that's, oh gosh, it's so frustrating. It is just so frustrating. Please do me a favor right now while you can. Your smartphone, your tablet, your computer. Go to benedictinstitute.org backslash Sarah. S-E-R-R-A. Did I get that right, Your Excellency? Yes. So it's Benedict yes. Institute. Dot org backslash or slash Sarah and sign the petition. If you're driving right now, we've posted it on our socials. You can find it at facebook.com. You can find it on our Twitter page at Drew Mariani show. We Over the past week, I've been no, doing nothing but talking about, you know, this culture war that we're really in and people feel frustrated. What can you do? Uh, you can go there right now, sign that petition, do it for his excellency, Archbishop Cordelione. I only have about a moment left. Uh, I know you made a, a comment about the Dodgers as well. What final thoughts do you want to leave us with as we continue to, you know, continue to wage, uh, a, you know, a, a battle in this great culture war of ours? It's another sign of this rising tide, not just anti-Catholicism, anti-God. This is uh, blasphemous. So our country is going, is, we're going to lose our country if we don't turn back to God. So people, yep. please pray, fast, worship, invite your friends to go to church with you. Amen. And we will pray for you. Keep up the good fight. I am always honored to have you here and appreciate your voice. That's uh, His yes, Excellency, so Archbishop Salvatore Cordelione. I'm out of time for the day. Until our passing and cross, remember God loves you. And so do I.